Hello, I'm attorney Justin McShane of the McShane Firm where we specialize in DUI defense. What I'm going to prove to you in this small video is a problem with residual mouth alcohol. It's a problem in the accuracy of a lot of pre-arrest breath tests. This and this, what they both are, are called pre-arrest breath tests or pre-arrest breath test screening devices. They are extremely popular and a lot of police officers rely upon them on the roadside to determine whether or not someone is in fact going to be arrested, whether or not they are over the legal limit. The problem with residual mouth alcohol has to do with the fact that if you don't follow the guidelines and the protocols that are with these two devices, you can possibly end up arresting an innocent person, and I'll show you why. This is the SD2. This device is, like I said, the most popular one that's out on the road. It's made by Intoxilizer, CMI Incorporated. This is one of the older devices that's out there on the road and currently in service all across the United States. This device, the yellow one, is one of the newer devices. It's made by a company called Intoximeters. It's called the FST. It is a newer device, but it's still prone to the same old problems. So let's begin our experiment. And just to prove to you that there's absolutely no shenanigans, what I'm gonna do is take each one of these devices, I'm gonna start with the yellow one, the FST, the AlcoSensor FST, and I'm gonna turn it on and power it on so that way you can see that it's operational and it's working quite well. So let's do that now. Okay, and it's powered on. And it also now says blow, B-L-O. Just to prove that I've had nothing to drink, I'm gonna blow into this and you can see the actual result. And it comes up and it shows no alcohol. The next device, the older device, is the SD2. And just to show that it's within tolerance, I'm gonna hit the read button and you're gonna see here at the very end that it comes up with triple zeros. The next step in the process is I'm gonna set it again. I'm gonna breathe into this device to show that I have a zero BAC. So here we go with this one. As you can see on there, it's still a zero BAC. So again, we're gonna set it, and we have the yellow one. And what we're going to do is we're gonna turn it on, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it down here, and what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take the garden variety Coors Light beer, we're gonna open it up, and I'm just gonna swish it around in my mouth. Not gonna drink it, but here's to you. Now to the SD2. Let's take a look at that result. 0, 04, 0, 05, 0, 06. We're going to be well over that limit. Now we're above the legal limit. Still climbing. ends at about a one, three, seven. That's enough to get you arrested. Now, with the Alco Sensor FST, 
let's see how the new gadget does. Analyzing. It says a one, zero, four. Now you tell me whether or not that's fair. And the reason why that it's so easy to avoid if you're a properly trained police officer is right here on the insert. The second line that's right here, it says 20 minutes should pass between the consumption of alcohol and a breath test. But in my many, many cases that I've handled, I've yet to see a police officer take 20 minutes on the roadside. Usually between the stop of the car and the decision to arrest is about seven, maybe nine minutes. But they stick these things in people's faces. And it doesn't matter how great you do on those roadside tests. It doesn't matter if you're telling the truth and you only had one beer, but because of residual mouth alcohol, you may wind up having to call us at the McShane firm. And that's why we're here, is that we have the information, we have the knowledge, and we have the experience to go out there and to fight for you.